Well, hello there and welcome back into the Bet US College Basketball Show. We are back again midweek of Championship Week. I am merely the somewhat capable host, TJ Reeves, coming your way again from Indianapolis, where I watched the Oakland Grizzlies punch their ticket to the NCAA tournament last night with a win over Milwaukee in the Horizon League Championship game. Got a chance to call that game on national radio. They are in. Are they going to maybe be in the first four in Dayton? Are they going to maybe be a 16 seed outright against a number one seed coming up? We'll find out. But anyway, it's good to be with you. It's good to be with the big man on campus yet again. Hello, Jeff Nadu. Hello, also Corby Craig, a member of the Walking Wounded. We have a diagnosis. They did not have to amputate his leg. He is alive. He's with us on BetUS TV. Good to be with you guys. Corby, first of all, glad you're okay. I saw that you were at the Sunbelt title game. You got to see firsthand what James Madison obviously look like. Uh, just a quick thought, is that a dangerous team come March Madness if they have like an 11 or a 12 by their name, something like that? Watch out. Yeah, I think uh, it's inevitable that they're dangerous. I think everybody can kind of say that. But I will say they had a kid that I didn't even know his name, had a career high in the first half of that game. So uh, they did shoot just absolutely incredible. Arkansas State also, I was very unimpressed by them. So, yes, James Madison's good, but uh, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of this is the Cinderella team, and I'm not sure I'm buying into that yet. But I didn't make it. It was fun. It was uh, I was on the James Madison side on accident. So it was fun to at least be in the crowd of the winning team. Uh, no doubt. Big man, good to be back with you. We had kind of a mixed bag on the show yesterday. You did get home with Stony Brook on the program uh, yesterday. The live button betrays the host again on the program with NC State and Louisville. Good to be with you, Jeff Nadeau, though. Thoughts on uh, Tuesday? Yeah, I'm wondering if I'll ever have a winning day on this show again. <laughs> I guess it's just not cut out for me this year. I mean, I try to put my, you know, it, I don't know. It's not really funny either because it's like you tr I, I try to put my best foot forward. I feel like I have the right plays a lot of the time. But, you know, just I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm just bit by this. I mean, what the hell it's was March. Merrimack doing? What, what it's was Merrimack? Mar okay, yes, you were it's touting been, It's been them. all year, though. It's not I got to confess. March. I got to confess. I did not see any of the Merrimack game. But as soon as I saw the score, I had the same reaction that you had. What was that last night? And I'm not doing it to demean you. I'm legitimately asking, what happened to them on their home floor? You saw the game. I didn't see the game. <laughs> I, okay. I have no idea. I'm not sure. I, they couldn't make any shots, my, is my guess. But that right. seems like a norm with teams I back. So it is what it is. You just got to keep shooting, I guess. Let, yes, and that's good philosophy for us today on BetUS TV. Uh, St. Mary's did beat Gonzaga. I know you boys were talking about Gonzaga Futures and the West Coast Conference. What do we make of that? Quick opinions, Corby. I know we talked a lot about Gonzaga on the weekend and on Monday leading into this championship game, but St. Mary's got it done. What do you make of that, Corby Craig? Yeah, I thought the line was kind of weird. I, uh, I I leaned St. Mary's in that game, and I'm a, I'm a Gonzaga kind of guy. So three and a half just seemed market loving Gonzaga too much. Um, it, it doesn't really scare me any. Gonzaga won the same game when they needed to. Don't think that this was a need to game. Obviously, it would have been fun, but uh, there's bigger bigger pictures at hand. I think Gonzaga is still a really good basketball team. Yeah, I see some of the uh, people in the chat saying Mary Mac, uh, tough night there. If you had them. Uh, and again, some other tickets being punched, including South Dakota State getting into the NCAA tournament as well uh, for the Jackrabbits. They've been there frequently. So a lot happened on Tuesday. Let's take a look at the records. Let's see what's up on the show. By the way, good call by Matt Cox yet again. He took the two uh, yesterday uh, with George Washington and LaSalle only won the game by one. That's a winner for him as well. Uh, Matty Cox, look at that, sizzling 12 games above 500 at this point. we gotta, we got to pick up the pace. The host live button has not been good. But like the all-time great home run hitters and the all-time great scorers in basketball, you don't stop swinging, baby. You don't stop shooting. Boxers don't stop. They do, right? You had a fight. You, you don't stop punching. You keep punching. And that's what we're going to do today on BetUS TV. If we're back. We're here to do it. Uh, and I've even got a live button play or two. Um, uh, we're looking forward to that uh, here on the program. All right, we're also looking forward to the Big 12 tournament. Yesterday we talked about UCF and their win um, now over Oklahoma State has put them into the next round of the Big 12 tournament. This is Kansas City. This is coming up now in about an hour and a half, 11.30 local time, 12.30 Eastern time for BYU and UCF. BYU on the neutral floor laying six here with a total of 146 in this game. Let's get it underway. Jeff Nadu, start us off with an official play. What stood out about this as game number one? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the dog here. I, I like this UCF team. I've mentioned, you know, I don't really want to lay points at them, but when they're getting points, I'm interested. Throw in that 
Look, I think all year we kind of saw, you know, BYU very good at home, but when they kind of went on the road, went in a neutral site, you know, they weren't exactly a, a steaming uh, team like they normally were at home. I, you know, this is a team that lost on the road at Oklahoma State, lost by 10 at Kansas State. I know this isn't a road game, but it is. They're taking a trip and going somewhere else. Uh, throw in the fact that both games this year against UCF were a uh, close. They were decided by 5-2, and two, uh, even in that building. You know, this is a, a tough UCF team. They're good defensively. Um, they're one of the stronger defensive teams in this conference. Uh, they've actually been better than you might think on offense. Uh, you know, I'm not running to back them on offense, but they really make their hay on defense. Uh, this was the a top five defense in the conference. I think they're a team that can grab some offensive boards, and I think this turns into a lower scoring game, one of those typical kind of sleepy spots for a team like Brigham Young, who, let's just be honest, I mean, when was the last time they played this early? They don't play this early ever. Uh, kind of, <laughs> kind of a rough spot. I mean, you figure every game they play on the East Coast, whether they go to you know Florida or even in the Midwest. I mean, they're playing at night a lot of the time. I just think this is a tough spot. I think UCF hangs here, puts a good game in, and Johnny Dawkins has been very good in these conference tourney spots, uh, especially getting points. I'll take the six here. The uh, the most recent game in Provo, for whatever it's worth, a couple of weeks back, was a very high-scoring game, Corby Craig. Thoughts on the total, including something we keep talking about here on BetUS TV. U- UCF has played a game now on this floor. BYU has been waiting to play, had the buy into this Wednesday game. All right, uh, thought, Corby Craig? Yeah, it's an interesting spot, mostly just due to the fact that I just saw what TJ uh, has cooking up his sleeve. <laughs> I fully, I fully agree with Jeff. This is a UCF team who, when you watch them play, like even in that Houston game, I think it was a few weeks back. I uh, know it's uh, yeah, a few weeks back. Uh, Jeff bet the under in, in a game that went over due to fouls late in the game. You still saw a UCF team whose defense just looked incredible, like, even with some injuries, even with some guys out. I thought their defense. I mean, they were able to play the rugby match that Houston wants to play, and they were able to give a good fight. A great coach, great talent. I think it feels like a team that's somehow underrated at this point. But the big issue here uh, for TJ's, but I fully agree with Jeff here, is UCF has played here. You just talked about that. BYU on a neutral court, the second most three-point shooting per game, points per game from the three-point line. Uh, going to a neutral court that they haven't played on all year, it's just a really weird spot. Jeff brings it up. They they struggle on the road. I think it's due to the fact that they rely so much on the three. Um, this is a UCF defense who, if you're not tall and, and can beat the press and speed, you're not going to beat it. So the only way I think BYU wins this is if it is a shootout. And if you can get UCF into a shootout, listen, uh, you deserve the win. I, I think six is a lot of points. I would lean towards the dog here. One other point to make, uh, the, the BYU game, uh, they beat UCF back on February 13th, 90-88. Brigham Young shot 46 free throws in that game. UCF shot 26, and they lost by two. Um, I, again, just played really well this season against this team. Um, I think BYU will win. I just think it's a close game. All right, as Corby alluded to, you let the cat out of the bag. I'm going to live play this one. Again, shooter's going to shoot. Swingers are going to swing at those fences. I'm going to live play BYU's team total. I see people in the chat saying sleepy start. I hear you, Jeff Nadeau, about are they awake on their body clock. I believe they will be. Uh, You look at their most recent results. Again, mixed bag. Some of these, though, were day games uh, that they played in their recent results. And uh, the Oklahoma State game was a day game. They scored 85 at home in Provo. The Iowa State game, they only scored 63 at Iowa State in an early game. They played a day game also against TCU, I believe, 87. In that one, they won at Kansas, scoring 76. They scored 74 in a loss at Kansas State. They scored 78 in a win at home over Baylor. They scored 93 in a win at Oklahoma State. I think this is over the team total of 76 and a half. I think that BYU will score with Nell and company. Jackson Robinson hitting some threes. Uh, What is it? Khalifa, the big seven-footer, has also been good, the the Egyptian. Uh, Let's see what happens here with BYU and UCF. So the big man is officially on board with UCF as the official play. He will take them as the underdog here. Let's lock him in. Look at the chats going, don't do it, TJ, don't do it. Sooner or later, this has got to start to even out on the live button, and I think it's BYU right here. So Jeff is on UCF officially. We lock him in, plus the six. I will take BYU, Kevin, one more time on the live button, BYU over 76 and a half. 
for their point total. This one again at 12.30 uh, Eastern, 11.30 Kansas City time. Yes, feel free to fade me right now on the live button. Fade us all on the live button. The live button's been a massacre. Uh, on the show. All right, guys, one other thing before we get to the rest of the scheduled uh, games that you see there on the screen, we do have an A10 game that is starting in about 15 minutes. Several people are asking, hey, what's the opinion? If we obviously go through our list, we're not going to get to the game before it starts. Give me a quick take on St. Joe's, George Mason, which, uh, Corby, I know you were observing that line uh, was showing some movement. It was earlier George Mason favored by one. The total is 135 and a half. So before we continue on our schedule, something on St. Joe's, George Mason, real quick, if either of you have anything on that. Yeah, I would, just uh, if you want to be on the sharp side of a move, I think uh, a whole bunch of people bet the George Mason money line minus 110. It looks like you can get one and a half still, some twos. Uh, this being 16 minutes till start, I think that's a really good move. So would agree with the move, uh, George Mason on the side or nothing. Uh, any thought here, Jeff, on this one at all? These teams did not play yesterday. This is a scheduled game in this slot in the A-10 tournament, so no advantage for either one of them. Any thought? It's a fairly even line, St. Joe's, George Mason. Yeah, I saw that George Mason was bet last night as well, so I, I think this is a, a pretty strong spot for them. Um, you know, St. Joe's just never really kind of figured it out defensively. It's always been an issue for Billy Lang. Great guard play they have there, but... I'm not sure they figured it out on the other end. This is a pretty good George Mason defense. Coin flippy game, though. Uh, not not a game that I that I had any interest in. Fair enough. Thank you, boys, for squeezing that one in because the chat's been asking. Numerous people asking about that one. It's up again as we do this live on Wednesday. It is up in about 15 minutes. 11.30 a.m. local time for that one in the Atlantic 10 in Brooklyn, New York. Next up for us, let's go back to the Big 12. Back-to-back games in the Big 12 that we're going to talk about. Damaged goods, the two-word phrase for Kansas, with the injuries to Hunter Dickinson and Kevin McCuller. Yet they press on now and play a Cincinnati team that beat West Virginia yesterday in the Big 12 tournament. Although it was a close ball game, Cincinnati does win. Now the Bearcats favored by two and a half against Kansas. Who'd have thunk this even a couple of weeks ago? about Cincinnati on a neutral floor in Kansas City being favored. Total 137 here in this matchup. Corby Craig, start the discussion. Um, Some people may be tempted right now to still take Kansas anyway, even though they're damaged. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, I'm one of those people. I think this number is just a a little too much. Like, I don't really know if I think Cincinnati's a good basketball team. Uh, Well, is the line wrong? I wouldn't say in particular. They were seven and a half point favorites at home in the last matchup, January 22nd for Cincinnati. So the number makes sense. Like I understand where they're coming from, but I will say this is just a regression of like taking the two best pieces out and then making a new line, which isn't how this works. Like there's going to be players that step up for Kansas that are worth more than current market prices. Like KJ Adams, a really good basketball player. Dewan Harris can score, uh, really hasn't had to score as much as he probably has the capabilities to. So from a standpoint of who's on the court on each side, I think that Kansas is much better than two points better. I, I'm at 4.9. I probably would bet Kansas, but uh, there's, a, there's a lot of variables. The best thing about betting is you don't have to bet to bet. Uh, I, there's so much going on here. I, I think Kansas wins by four plus, but um, no need to lay it on a game that just has so many variables here. Jeff Nadu, there is a school of thought that with Bill Self already saying, hey, no Hunter Dickinson, no Kevin McCullough for the entire tournament – that Kansas almost has the mentality overtly of we're likely going to lose early and let's just be ready for next weekend. Do you buy that? Absolutely. I mean, the coach came out and basically said that. I mean, this is unheard of. I mean, we've, we haven't ever seen this where <laughs> kids are just being, hey, go take a rest. We'll see you in the uh, middle of March. You know, um, you have to also remember, I mean, Hunter Dickinson McCullough take nearly 60% of the shots Kansas makes or, or, or attempts. I'm sorry. That's a lot. I mean, that's a huge part. And let's remember, with them healthy, I mean, this team was questionable in conference. I mean, they, they weren't exactly a, a high flyer. They weren't exactly the best team in this conference. They were 10 and 8. And for the most part, they were all in there. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know how you can bet a team like this. Look, they may come. And, and I think Corby makes a good point. I think sometimes we overrate injuries sometimes. But I think to me it's more the mindset where – I think these guys are just ready and saying, hey, you know, now what? Because when we really look at Johnny Furphy, for instance, you know, Johnny Furphy's a great three-point shooter, but if the threes aren't going in, is he 
is he a bit of a, I'm not going to say liability, but what else does he do exactly? And is he um, less of a threat without the Dickinson low post situation and kicking it out to him? Is he less effective for that reason too? And also remember, I mean, Cincinnati's not chopped liver. I mean, this is a good defensive team under uh, Wes Miller. This is the, the best two-point defense in a country. Kansas almost, almost exclusively a two-point offense. Throw in as well. With everybody healthy, so let's say McCuller and Dickinson are in there, this is a team that is still one of the lowest bench-laden uh, teams in the country. They have no bench. So I, I think you get to a point where certain people are on the court maybe you don't want to have on the court. Um, it does concern me that Cincinnati had to kind of fight back yesterday to beat West Virginia. Um, West Virginia was up 64-48 with 11 and a half minutes to go and, and lost by five. Um, rough. Uh, that's how bad West Virginia is. So... Yeah, I have a hard time here. It's more of the mindset for me. Yeah, we talked on the show live yesterday where everybody was asking about Louisville getting the 9.5 or 10 and West Virginia getting the 10. You know, early starts, sleepy starts in both situations, and both of them hung in and both of them obviously uh, easily covered um, in those situations. All right, again, uh, By the can't... way, Yeah, go ahead. Real, real quick, Corby, I just wanted to tell you, I'm not sure if you know, there's a guy in the chat, I think he wants to marry you. His name is Jason Cox. He, 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 I think he is in love with you. Just want to tell you. He's not gotten Jason. down on a knee with a ring yet, though. So we He might, though, Wait. by the end of the show. Okay. I'm waiting on it, Jason. All right, we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. It's a great question that got posed in the chat, too. I don't know what the answer is. When is the last time that Kansas was an underdog in the Big 12 tournament in their opening game? That might answer be yeah. never. I mean, and not in the Bill Self era, maybe. I mean, right. in the opening game. Now, maybe they were an underdog in a semifinal game or in a championship game. But in an opening game, Kansas is the doggy. Seems like the boys are saying stay away uh, we'll right say, here from this game. Go ahead. Anything else? If you, if, if you wanted to bet a future here, I talked about this with Jeff on a Twitter space the other day. But uh, Kansas being less than a less than basically a possession here, uh, Baylor futures open up a lot of value. I saw somebody say you can get uh, 7.5 to 1 right now. Uh, on Baylor to win the Big 12. Can they beat Houston? That's the question. I think they can beat Iowa State pretty handily. I feel comfortable with that. But can they beat Houston? Probably not. Uh, but you're getting a good number. Like if Kansas isn't a four-point favorite here, they're going to be a three-and-a-half, four-point dog to Baylor. So you're going to get a pretty good number as a four-point favorite, probably a two-point favorite, and then a slight dog at 7.5 to 1. Good discussion here. Again, this game is up second on the floor this afternoon in Kansas City. It is Kansas. It is Cincinnati in uh, in action in the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City. Again, damaged goods is the phrase we keep using about the Jayhawks. I don't know if it's going to be rock chalk today. Probably not. We gave you some good thoughts on that. Before we skip along, thank you for finding us. Live audience is growing and growing since the show just began. Uh, back 20 minutes ago, make sure to hit that like button. You see it right there. We're here at 11 a.m. Monday through Friday, and now on Saturdays as well at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Do us this. Do us this solid. Not only hit the like button, make sure you're subscribed. We have the goal. Brother Nadu is not sure if we can get to that goal. What were you promising to do? You were promising to do something if we could get I to 10,000. I was going to the, run on the court at the Final Four. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got to make that happen, maybe. Uh, if we can get to 10,000 subs by next Thursday and the start in earnest of March Madness, 16 games on Thursday, 16 more on Friday, then uh, that's what uh, we would love to have that happen. That can only happen with your help. Hit subscribe down there out of the 400 plus at last check that are watching. I'm fairly certain that not all of you are subscribed. Hit the subscribe button. You get the automatic reminder that we're here. We're here the rest of this week. Uh, Thursday and Friday at 11, Saturday, 10 a.m. Boys, again, I'll be in Las Vegas for the Mountain West Conference Tournament Championship game. I'll be with you, 7 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Can't wait to do it with you folks. Help us out. Hit the subscribe button uh, as well. All right, let's press on. Next up, interesting uh, here in the uh, in the next matchup here, that's Abilene Christian and Stephen F. Austin, a couple of teams that have both been in the NCAA Tournament on previous occasions. They are part of the Thursday card. You see that on the neutral floor, Stephen F. Austin is favored by three and a half in this game, and the total is 138. Let's begin the discussion. Corby Craig, start us off here, and you've got an official play on this game. What stands out between Abilene Christian and uh, the matchup here with Stephen F. Austin uh, in the in the, uh, in the the WAC? Um, in the WAC tournament in Las Vegas. Speaking of Las Vegas, multiple tournaments in Vegas. What stands out about this one? Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting matchup, one that 
people in the chat, it looks like uh, we'll probably hate the fact that we go from just absolute major market games to Abilene Christian versus Stephen F. Austin. But I've had success doing something this year more than years have passed. Uh, pretty simple. There's going to be a regression from like regular season number to uh, conference number. Few reasons. Uh, a difficulty, like they're going to try harder on defense because their season's on the line. Also, you're on a neutral court, first game playing here. Uh, a lot of things are going to regress. But if you look at Abilene Christian versus Stephen F. Austin, their first matchup, this number was 148. Second matchup, 147 and a half. Now you're getting 139, which it, in a lot of cases makes sense. Like if you're BYU, it's hard to shoot on a neutral court. I understand. But Abilene Christian and Stephen F. Austin. Do not shoot threes, TJ. These are two teams who want to get to the basket as fast as they can. They want to get foul calls. They want to keep this tempo going. And how do you do that on a neutral court? Uh, you don't shoot threes, which they're not really worried about. So I think that the market's just obviously going to regress a number um, that they just they, they have historics on, and they do it every single game on a first-round neutral court. There's no reason for it to happen here. This game is going to play really high pace. There's going to be a ton of free throws. Uh, two teams who want to run. They don't want to gun. And uh, I think this one gets ugly and scrappy fast on a line that's three and a half. It makes a lot of sense for there to be late game fouling. And uh, this is a game that I think Abilene Christian can win it also. Like, uh, this is a, a team who, at the start of the year, played awful defense. We saw that Stephen F. Austin game in the first matchup go to 89 possessions in overtime. Uh, after that, the coach had a press conference and he was like, our defense, it might have went to overtime, but we don't deserve overtime. We look awful. So uh, I think this is a team that... Focused on defense all year, but uh, getting into a conference tournament, that's been adjusted a little too much here. Grand Canyon has been the top team in this conference the whole season. This is Abilene Christian, finished 10-10 and 10 in the regular season in the WAC, and Stephen F. Austin, who finished 10-10. and 10. They are playing 8.30 Pacific time tonight, Jeff, a total of 136.5, and, and Stephen F. Austin is a 3.5 point favorite. Anything on this one at all? Yeah, I was a bit surprised to see ACU catching three or four here. I mean, I felt like this game was a little closer than, than maybe that, maybe a coin flip, really. I mean, the game was close a couple of weeks ago. You know, Stephen F. Austin is going to turn you over. We all know that. Abilene, though, doesn't really turn the ball over. Uh, Abilene just got to make sure they don't get crushed on the boards. You know, that was one of the issues last night I worried about with uh, with Merrimack. You know, was Wagner just going to control the boards? That's what they do. And when you look back at the game, um, you know, they, they had uh, 10 offensive rebounds. And I'm sure most of that led to the point. So they have to do a good job on the block because F- Stephen F. Austin is a good offensive rebounding team. But I don't have much here. Uh, I'll uh, venture uh, to buy into Corby's play and uh, root for him to win. All right. Uh, He says here in this matchup there will be enough points. It's not a lot of points at 136. He thinks it goes over. Again, this one, 830 uh, Pacific time tonight at the WAC Conference Tournament. And again, one of four tournaments that are going on simultaneously in Las Vegas this weekend, including the Pac-12 Tournament, the Mountain West Tournament, and the Big West Tournament. Hello, Vegas. And they just got done with St. Mary's beating Gonzaga. But the play is over 139 here in the uh, in the matchup. Uh, he wants to see a lot of points, does Corby, in the Abilene Christian Stephen F. Austin game. One more game to go. By the way, I mentioned the Kansas game was early. The Kansas game is actually tonight. Tonight for Kansas and uh, Cincinnati. All right. Uh, this one is the Big Sky Championship game, and it's an all-Montana battle coming in the Big Sky Title game in Boise, Idaho on the neutral floor. The Montana Grizzlies are laying six here with a total of 145. Automatic bid on the line. Winner is probably like a 14 seed, maybe a 15 seed when it's all said and done. That's me saying that on the Bracketology. Jeff Nadu, start the discussion on the Battle of Montana tonight for the Big Sky Championship. Yeah, I think when we, when it's all said and done, I mean, th- this actually ended up being a pretty decent matchup. You know, this is a, a you know, Two teams don't like each other. Obviously, a, a conference that's produced some decent teams over the years in the NCAA tournament. I think this is a really tough game for, for Montana State. Uh, obviously, I think there's a reason they're a dog. They're going to struggle at the rim in this game. They're just not a very good defense. Um, this is a group that really struggled in the half court defensively. And when you play Montana, uh, you know if you can't defend in the half court, you're going to have a lot of issues. This is a really good offense. Um, they really don't do anything poor on the offensive end, and they're actually a pretty solid uh, group defensively, uh, especially in the half court. R- really kind of controlled both games, um, won by double digits in both of them. Um, I-, I think you know this is a spot over the year, at least 
at least on this show, and some of the few wins I've had, has been backing teams in a third game to three-peat, essentially, and win all three. Uh, I'm going to lay the number here. Uh, I'm going to add this one, minus six. Ooh. I think the number's just kind of, it's got a little high, but I'm still happy at six. I just don't think Montana State's real good. I think they kind of lucked out to to be here a bit, um, you know, playing, you know, Weber, and then they get Sac State. I don't think they'd be here if, if Sac State would have would have lost. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the better team, a team that I think controls them in the half court. I'll lay the six with the Grizzlies. Live button play right there, kids. From Jeff Nadu, that's an ad on the Montana Grizzlies. Hit that live button. Thank you, Kevin, our great crew at BetUS TV. There may even be one more live button play coming. Maybe more than one coming up. Corby Craig, thoughts on the total here uh, for this Big Sky Championship game and the automatic bid? Yeah, uh, correct me if I Jeff say Grizzlies. I liked that. It was, uh, it was a soothing noise for the uh, start of the morning. I, I, but... <laughs> I got to see, hold on, hold on. I got to see the Oakland Grizzlies last night in Indianapolis. A good Not game. to be confused with the Memphis Grizzlies of the NBA. Corby, continue as we totally digress. All right, yeah. So uh, interesting spot. I, I do agree with Jeff on the side. Uh, the only concern I have, and it's not really a concern, but it, Sac State, uh, Montana State last night was one of my biggest bets of the season on the over there. It felt great. Like they, I'm talking an 80-point first half. And the reason, I'm not going to say that this is a fact, but like, listen, if you've watched any of the games in this tournament so far, these rims – they might be they might be a beach ball size. Like Montana State <laughs> hit what I think 14 threes last night. Sac State center hit three threes. Um, they had 91 versus Weber State. You see Montana in their game uh, went 67 percent from the field. Like no one is missing in these. I think that leads to regression, uh, on, mostly on a Montana State team who needs the three pointer. That's kind of why I like that Montana uh, angle there. Also in that Sac State game. Montana State shot lights out 11 for 27, 40%, uh, but 11 felt like they were all in the first half. The The issue is they played no defense. Like they, lost, they won by three, but they gave up a wide open three with two seconds left. Like there's only one play you can guard, and, and they gave it up. Uh, he missed the shot, thankfully, but uh, I think this Montana State team has a lot of trouble on defense. They've gotten lucked out by their three point shooting and then capabilities. Would lean towards Montana pretty heavily. Uh, the only worry I have with the total is I've talked about this on the show a few times. If Montana is up, they don't want to keep playing basketball. They want to burn the clock to zero and then get a quality shot, uh, and that's going to kill an over. So if you think Montana State's going to regress, which I would say yes, uh, this would be a Montana side or an under here. All right, again, Jeff Nadu has the live button play. There it is. Montana tonight to win the Big Sky it would be three straight wins over their rival Montana State. Uh, Let's see what happens in that matchup this evening that, again, the winner probably something like a 14 or a 15 seed. Keep an eye on that. They'll be playing the teams on the two or the three seed line. Might get their hands on somebody like Duke, for example, uh, or as you progress through the the Big 12, somebody like Baylor might be, I'm just speculating, might be the opponent. 8.30 uh, Pacific, 9.30 Mountain Time in Boise for Montana and Montana State on ESPN2 for the Big Sky championship and with that we've got some opportunity now for some q a again hit that like button make sure you're subscribed i mean guys these next two days are going to be phenomenal with all of the games i mean there's literally like 70 games tomorrow of conference tournaments uh with everything rolling in earnest and then on friday i still think it's like 45 games something like that on friday we're going to be here on bet us tv if you like what you're seeing and what we're doing hit that like button make sure you're subscribed make sure you're with us at 11 a.m thursday and friday 10 a.m on saturday all the way through march all the way through the final four we're going to be here on bet us tv all right let's get into it uh here as you see also the uh uh, the promo right there, 11 a.m. is when we're going to be here Thursday, Friday, 10 a.m. on Saturday. All right, Bill is watching. He says, uh, it's my birthday. He says, I need confirmation on BYU and or Colgate, please. We gave you a lot on BYU, Bill, at the beginning of the show. Anything on Colgate here, guys, uh, for him? And I did not have that one on the radar. That one is at 7 Eastern time. That's the Patriot League championship game. They're favored by eight and a half over Lehigh. So happy birthday, Bill. Thoughts on Colgate, Lehigh, in Hamilton, New York, on the neutral floor here? Or is that is that Colgate's home floor? Maybe Colgate's home floor. Colgate. Go ahead. Thoughts? Yeah, the, this is um, 
I think Corby will agree. Kind of reminds me a little bit of, of Stony Brook last night. This number just seemed high. I mean, I, I get Colgate's good. I don't think this is a vintage Colgate team, though. Um, you know, Lehigh was very competitive in both games this year. One of the games, uh, they didn't have Keith Higgins, who, um, you know, ends up kind of being one of their better players. You know, he's kind of that do-it-all, you know, kind of wing player for them. Uh, in, a, in a title game, I mean, we've seen dogs really bark in these smaller tournaments, i.e. Wagner, Stony Brook. Um, I think Lehigh uh, will be up for this. The concern, though, and if you know anything about Lehigh, they're one of the smallest teams in the country. Uh, and Colgate's just going to pound uh, pound the rim. I mean, that's that's what they're going to do with records and Woodward and, and, and Moffitt. So that's concerning. But I feel like Brett Reed, uh, you probably have something here. He's done a nice job in both the games. And they're a ninth in the country in defensive rebounding. So, you know, in a low-scoring game, which we think is probably first to 60, getting eight seems really attractive here. Corby Craig, thoughts here on Colgate looking for the automatic bid. Yeah, if you like Colgate, you missed the number. Uh, it was six and a half this morning. Now it's eight and a half. The biggest issue, and I saw someone tweet about this today, is like, uh, if you want to know which way there's going to be steam, did the other team play in overtime last night? All right, well, then the other side's going to get steam. So Lehigh played in overtime. Um, and so I worry that maybe they're tired, but uh, that's baked in the market. It's eight and a half now. If they didn't play in overtime, this would still be six and a half, kind of just generalized how the market's been moving so um think if you want colgate you missed the best if you want lehigh uh, i would buy now eight and a half seems crazy at this point gave you a lot on that game damian is watching he has an interesting question about uh futures on underdogs in these conference tournaments he says michigan right now damian says is 10 to 1 to win the big 10 tournament clemson 9 to 1 baylor to 8 to 1 north texas 9 to 1 you got any thought on an underdog future play out of any of that group Anything, boys? Jeff, Corby. Uh, well, well, let, yeah, you have to kind of re- rehash which ones he's he's asking about, but uh, you know, he's I, asking I, Michigan ten to one, yeah, maybe no. Clemson nine to one, maybe Baylor six to one. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind Baylor. I don't, I don't mind Clemson. Um, Michigan, no, I think they what they'd have to win four or five games. Yeah, I don't, Michigan I don't know. may be done about nine o'clock tonight in the Big Ten when they play. Yeah, Penn I mean, State. I, I don't know. I, I it was abundantly clear to me Michigan quit like months ago, so I don't, I don't know why we'd have any interest in backing them ten to one. I'd need, uh, I don't know, I'd need uh, five thousand to one. one. Five thousand yeah. to one. Corby, no any interest. thought? Corby, any thought on a dog play right now? We've talked a lot about Baylor. Yeah, we uh, we Jeff and I were on space the other day and got a laugh out of the idea that like sometimes value isn't value in tournaments. Like the, sometimes there's just teams that can't win. Case in point, Miami last night. Miami lost pretty handily. They've never were in that game. Um, Clemson, I think, has a shot. Seven to one, awful price. Baylor, if you want short and sweet, Baylor six to one. I think Baylor's a really good price. Uh, they had their favorites versus Kansas or Cincinnati, pretty easy. Favorites versus Iowa State, which people would probably argue with. Uh, and then they lose to Houston. So you have a cool ticket that you burn in the championship game. I would say, um, you know, if you want a, a good one, a Washington State, I mean, they're like 6-7-1. You know, they're a team that, you know, beat Arizona twice. You know, this is a group that all year has been the second-best team in this conference. You know, we know Arizona has had some issues away from McHale Center. Uh, this is a Washington State team that that's really good on defense. You know, they're well-coached. Uh, and they play a tempo that is conducive to bothering in Arizona. So maybe take a shot with them. Um, you know, I also have mentioned before, you know, how much I like Boise, you know, Boise, can we make the case of the best team in the Mountain West and a really good Mountain West? Um, but yeah, I like, I like Washington state. I think that's a good one. I'm looking forward to being out there at the Mountain West. Mountain West may come up again in a minute here in a live button play. Stand by. Elias is watching. Thank you, Elias. He's a member. He says Notre Dame, Wake Forest this afternoon, ACC, Wake Forest cannot lose to them again. They are a significant favorite um thoughts here guys on that one neutral floor yeah i think if i think if you're indiana state who look i've said before i they should not be in the ncaa tournament uh, it's laughable to even consider them uh, they, they're worried about a team like wake if wake does well in this tournament villanova you know new mexico they're out uh we all know it too you say they can't lose and you're right they can't lose um that doesn't mean they won't i mean this right. is a team that you know lost to, to notre dame i remember matt uh Cox called it a couple of of weeks ago. Um, This is a team that has been very helter-skelter, very Jekyll and Hyde. 
Uh, but Notre Dame, you know, what what team are they? Are they the team that beat Wake and Clemson, or are they the team that lost by, you know, 30 to North Carolina and, and, and to Virginia Tech? I, I don't really know. I think defensively, though, you have to maybe maybe back them here. Shrewsbury's been good in these quick turnaround kind of prep spots. Uh, I'd like like 10 and a half or 11 and a half. I don't think we're going to get there, though. Right now it's nine and a half, and again, Wake won, or uh, Notre Dame won those games against Wake Forest and Clemson at home. This is neutral floor. Corby, here we go again. Notre Dame played a game against Georgia Tech. Wake Forest has not played a game yet on this floor in D.C. The total is 136 and a half. This is an afternoon game. Anything real quick on that? Yeah, it would be an under or nothing for me, which just doesn't sound fun in a Wake game. I didn't bet this, but uh, Notre Dame... Somebody brought up in the chat. They've uh, they've been thriving on the three point line, and and Wake has the guards to stop them. In that last game, Burton I think had thirty points. That was basically their whole means of offense. So um, would be Wake or nothing, under nothing. But uh, that nine and a half, ten. I mean, I I don't want anything to do with that. All right, Jeff Nadu brought it up before we're back to the live questions. I'm going to do it again, Brother Nadu. Live button play for TJ will be with New Mexico in the Mountain West tournament against Air Force. They lost embarrassingly at home to Air Force. They know they need to win, just like Wake knows they need to win for a late impression uh, here in these conference tournaments, just like Villanova or Seton Hall and St. John's that are Seton Hall, St. John's playing each other tomorrow. New Mexico knows they need to win. They're getting Jamal Bashburn Jr. back healthy. He was sick on the weekend. They played a really good game at Utah State without him and lost at the very end of it. Still controversial with the whole free throw not hitting the rim and the refs were zombies and just let it go and let the game end instead of saying dead ball out of bounds with two and a half seconds left. But anyway, New Mexico neutral floor with Air Force. I think they're wary of them. I think they're ready to go, and I'm going to lay the massive line, 14 and a half. Lay it. I think they win big this afternoon in Vegas. Live button play, New Mexico Lobos from the host. So I got two live plays on the show. We got time for a few more questions. Uh, let me see who was next in line on uh, our program. Joe. Joe says Butler Xavier. He's curious about the under, Corby Craig, under 151 and a half at the Garden. Any thought in the Big East tournament on that? Yeah, if you talk to uh, Kyle Hunter, he'll tell you Garden stats all day, and, and an under is a pretty good look. And then if you go watch Butler basketball, I think I would still agree that an under is a good look. Like, this is a team who I just, uh, as efficient as they are, I don't think that they're a good offense. 60th in the nation adjusted offensive efficiency. From what I've watched, my eyeball test, they're not that. Um, so they just played Xavier. They get Xavier again. I think that's good for a scheme standpoint. That was 75 possessions. I can't imagine that this one's that fast. I, I would lean towards an under in the garden. Jeff Nadu, anything? Xavier short favorite this game for Eastern time on Fox Sports 1. Any thought? Yeah, Posh coming home. He was at St. John's. Now he's coming back home playing for Butler. Look, I I've always said any team that he is on uh, is generally a great over team. I mean, he plays no defense. They play no defense, and they play really fast. I don't know. Something told me this was first of 75 wins. I know you know generally games go under here, but um, the f first game they played was 85-71. I'm just not a big fan of taking unders involving Butler. Uh, they're very downhill. You know, they want to get to the line. Uh, they want to play fast. I have a concern this turns into a bit of a up and up and down game. Good enough. Matthew watching says, can OU, meaning Oklahoma, with two important players not playing, get a win? They play TCU, two local time, three Eastern time this afternoon. What about the Sooners, Jeff? Damaged? Well, yeah, I mean, you got to definitely take a look at who's playing. I mean, John Ugly didn't play, hasn't played for a while. I don't know that that will matter much because he hasn't been in there for a while. I got to know who else is out. But, you know, Oklahoma struggled at times with TCU's kind of up and down a pace and athleticism. But I've said before, I, I don't I, – I, I couldn't call a TCU game if you gave yep. me the, the stats for tomorrow and, and, and the prediction for tomorrow. So I, <laughs> I have no idea. Oklahoma has lost three of their last four. Corby, any thought including the total? Neutral floor, Kansas City this afternoon. Yeah, TCU is a team that I just don't understand. Uh, Oklahoma I don't like, so honestly I would lean TCU, but again, I, I, would, not, I would not be betting away. on this. Stay away. Paul watching. He says, can we cover Quinnipiac minus the 6.5 in Canisius? Of course we can, Paul. Jeff Nadu, thoughts on yeah. that one? Yeah, I actually played Quinnipiac in, in the uh, – future market in this tournament. I think they're the best team, surely. 
Um, really well coached under Tom Pacora, first year coach. Uh, they have done a really nice job on the offensive end. I, I think for sure have been one of the better offenses and defenses in this conference. And I think they're kind of in a conference that's always kind of crazy. Uh, I think they kind of will shine through. I mean, they they beat up Canisius in the only meeting they had this year, uh, 88-63. This is a great team to back against the spread as a favorite. One of the better free throw shooting teams in the country at over 78%. Something to keep an eye on. Uh, it's been a it's been a kind of rough up and down year for Canisius. What I find interesting about them and what I just said is they're one of the worst free throw shooting teams in the country uh, at 359. So I think that could play a huge role. When you back a team getting points, if they turn the ball over, don't make threes, don't make free throws, how do they stay in the game? Right. Um, I've always said that. I think this is a bad spot for, for Canisius, especially off playing yesterday. Um, I think Quinnipiac kind of gets right here and, and beats up Canisius. I would lay the number. T- number seems a little too low maybe even. Six and a half is the number. Again, this is the opening round of the Metro Atlantic uh, tournament, the MAAC, which we've talked a lot about. Atlantic City, Iona, Rick Patino won it a year ago. Marist in the title game, I, I did the title game on national radio. Marist made a run all the way to the title game from out of nowhere. This conference can be wide open. Corby, anything on the total Quinnipiac Canisius, total 144, it looks like. Anything real quick? Yeah. We- it would be an over or nothing for me. I, I agree. This this seems low. Quinnipiac's going to run. It's kind of the team you want to back in a, in a game that's uh, any kind of covering spread. You want a team that's going to continue to push possessions as many times as they can. So uh, I would never back a team 360th in the nation of free throw percentage. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty easy there. Also, keep in mind, I think this is something we have to mention. Um, Quinnipiac, or not Quinnipiac, Canisius played without two players just today. They also... Over the last two games, it played Manhattan and Mount St. Mary's. I mean, two of the worst teams in this conference. I don't think there's a, a bunch to gleam there. Again, as long as Quinnipiac does a decent enough job rebounding the basketball, I don't think they'll have much trouble here. Quickly, we'll move to a couple of more before we are done. Uh, Easy Baby 1988's in here all the time as a member. Good to have you. He says NC State Q's, Q's laying two and a half. I think I saw uh, one and a half. Uh, maybe the, not, the line is falling live since he asked the question. One and a half or two. Any thought on Syracuse? NC State, here we go again. Played yesterday with Louisville. Syracuse has not yet played in the tournament. Thoughts real quick, guys? Well, look, I mean, I think you have to kind of it's just assume like roster-wise, Syracuse is a better roster than NC State. I, you know, I think we have to talk about how they have played well. They won four or five, only losses to Clemson. I mean, you know, they struggled with Clemson all year. I lean Syracuse just on overall roster, and I feel like they have played better under Red Autry recently. NC State's been kind of a mess. I think they did get lucky yesterday playing Louisville roster, which I think to me is Syracuse. And look, Kevin Keats' team's going to press a lot of the time. Syracuse has been good at not turning it over. I think if you can break through the press initially, I think Syracuse is the play there. Corby Craig, any thought on the total in this one for Syracuse to NC State? Yeah, NC State just shot incredible. Uh, they shot incredible in the last matchup of these two teams. So I would lean towards an under, just the idea that that's not going to continue. The, the last game of these two meeting was probably the most fun game I've watched this season. I think uh, DJ Horn had 32. Someone from Syracuse, let's see, Chris Bell had 26, 8 for 10 for 3. So just an absolute shooting massacre. Uh, I can't imagine that happens again. Under 152 seems decent. I didn't. Uh, I didn't touch it, though. Real quick, but, DJ Horn didn't play us today either. That that's another loss for for uh, for NC State. You know, six two guard, Arizona State, and Illinois State transfer. He didn't play yesterday. Uh, his minutes had been down a little bit, but uh, you know, maybe he's maybe he's got a chronic injury. I don't know. Okay, uh, we got to go here in a couple of moments because literally I have housekeeping banging on the door in the Indianapolis hotel while while the show is wrapping up and I'm trying to hold them off. Uh, by the way, one more thing, Corby Craig. Uh, congratulations to Louisville and Kenny Payne because they're still checking. It's been 20 years at least since a team shot 55% or more from the floor. or more from three, made at least 10 free throws and was perfect from the line. Louisville was 11 for 11 and lost the game. That's notable. Uh, Kenny Payne is still employed at the moment. It could be any time that Louisville pulls the trigger, though, on getting rid of him. Let's see. And that, again, was NC State coming from behind to win that game. 
So we shall see uh, what happens with that. Do we have time for one more real quick before we recap what we're doing? Let's see who was next in the line. Several of you are asking about different games. Gray says thoughts on Utah Valley laying five and a half guys in the WAC tournament. Any thoughts on the Utah Valley game? And I don't even have the opponent in Cal Baptist. Cal Baptist. Any quick thought? Well, Utah Valley is an elite defensive team. Uh, They've been very good all year. But Cal Baptist under Rick Croy has been been a decent offense over the years, not as good this year, very dependent on the three-point shot. Um, I don't know. Flip a coin in this one. Uh, I I would just assume, um, just bet Grand Canyon. Uh, They're they're the best team in this conference. Yeah, stay away from this one. Corby, anything there or just move on? I think Gray asked because it just got steamed from five. It looks like five and a half up to six. So good question. Uh, If you can ever grab steam before it's a a worse number, I think it's a good idea. Be the side I lean to. The issue is I would lean towards an under here, which these are just two teams. Like at 128 and a half would still lean under, which terrifies me for taking points with a a favorite. So I lead low, uh, but I do see there's some steam there. So Gray, if you hopped on five, five and a half, you're you're probably looking good. Uh, Rick? Uh, new member says thought on Clemson uh, late tonight with Boston College laying the seven again here real quick Boston College won their game last night Clemson hasn't played a game Clemson needs the game for seeding purposes they're safely in the tournament any quick thought Clemson ACC game tonight neutral floor uh, I leaned over a little bit I mean, Clemson seems to have all these super high scoring games 85 79 92 87 uh, great offense should be able to score at will and we know BC can't stop anybody I don't know I think BC's a decent offense though too so I don't I don't hate them first thought was over but Corby any better. thought on Clemson Boston College or you want to move on real quick I got one more it would be Clemson and the uh, over for me side in the over uh, Say less TC watching asks about Oregon State, UCLA, Pac-12 tournament, Oregon State getting the six. He's interested in the side. Anything? Corby, Jeff, anything on that? Uh, well, I mean, UCLA beat Oregon State uh, both times this year by, what, uh, six or seven and then seven. I, I don't know. It's now or never for UCLA. I mean, it's been a, a long year for Mick Cronin, but if, if it's me, I'm saying, hey, here we are. Great reset. Let, let's let's do this. Defensively, they're good enough. Um, anything could happen in, in, in this conference. I think it's pretty open. Uh, Arizona is not that backable as a favorite to me. Um, we'll see what UCLA has. I mean, this would be a great spot to just win by double digits and move on to the next. This is not a good Oregon State team, um, but UCLA has been bad all year. Hard to hard to gauge. Understood. All right, gentlemen, best bets. We need to scoot uh, here on the program. Let's take a look at what we're officially on, including any live button plays that we had. Corby's got an over in the WAC tournament game with Abilene Christian and Stephen F. Austin. Jeff took UCF in the early game uh, that is coming up this afternoon with Brigham Young. I played the BYU team total live over the 76 and a half. Jeff likes Montana in a live button play. Big Sky championship game. He says lay the points on the neutral floor and I'll lay them with New Mexico on the neutral floor against Air Force. I think they get big time revenge. With that, final thoughts, guys. We've got to go here in a minute. Jeff Nadu, final thought before we're done. Yeah, if you didn't think you were living in a dystopic society, Aaron Rodgers is the now new pick for vice president <laughs> with Robert Kennedy. What 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 the hell is going on? Uh, the the only thing that I can tell you is trying to explain this to your teenage daughters about what's going on with politics and the presidential race. We right. we are living in a reality show world, I think right now. This is almost not even real life. Uh, Corby Craig, back to uh, college basketball and anything else in a final thought? Are you good? Yeah, if, uh, if, if anybody from the show, I already talked to Ed Bluss, but if anybody on the show is headed to Las Vegas for March Madness Round 1, I will be there. So uh, let's link up, bet on some college basketball. So let's see if the town is standing as I will be there this weekend, you'll be there next weekend. Will Vegas exist after that? We'll find out. We'll find out. Hey, let's do this again tomorrow at 11 a.m. Phenomenal day tomorrow with like 70 games going on. Massive Good. games. I'm going to have... Rich. Probably 10 picks tomorrow. i got to get back into the green. The live live button will be flying tomorrow. There's a tease. Thank you to Kevin and everybody else on uh, the the behind-the-scenes at BetUS TV. Jeff Nadu, thank you. Corby Craig, thank you. we got to roll out of here. Enjoy the games today. We're back tomorrow on BetUS TV's College Basketball Show. Thanks for joining in. Don't forget to like our video. If you don't want to miss our next show, make sure to ring our bell and subscribe. For all our sports content, head to BetUSTV.com. See you next time.